Hey guys, so I thought I'd use this vlog to take the time out to talk about all my past relationships. I'm actually single at the moment. I've been single for almost two years, which is I think the longest time I've gone without being in a relationship or really crushing on someone, which it's kind of sad, but I'm kind of happy to learn more about myself as an individual rather than to be in a relationship and uh, focusing on the relationship rather than just on myself. This has huge credit to my last relationship, which I'll get to talk on about later on in the vlog. All right, so we're gonna start from kindergarten. All right, so <laughs> I started at a very young age and I remember in kindergarten, I was crushing on this girl. I won't say any of the girl's last names, just for privacy reasons. I was crushing on this girl named Holly. And from what I remember, we were pretty inseparable, I guess. I think this is just my version. She might tell you a different version. But I remember kissing her. She was my first kiss. Um, I remember kissing her under the playground tunnel. And my mum and her mum used to um, organise play dates. Little did they know that we were sneaking behind the couch and kissing each other. And that didn't go anywhere because I'm pretty sure we were four and we didn't know what commitment was at that time. And then we separated and went to different schools. Okay, so in year three, I remember I had this crush and she was in year five. I can't remember her name, but I really, really liked her. I liked her because she was older and she always used to get me to do like really rebellious things. So in primary school, we had this red line like around the buildings and stuff. So you can't pass a red line. It was like a safety thing. And she'd always like at lunchtime and recess, she'd always like get me to come over and cross the red line and we'd see how many steps we could take over the red line. And I found that so attractive. Um, but we didn't really have like um, a kiss or I'm pretty sure we hugged sometimes but it was nothing really serious again <laughs> it was in year three so uh, nothing came out of that and year four I changed schools I went to a school called Corpus Christi and I was new to the school and um, I was placed next to this girl named Kayla and we would always like just be together and always talk and like we, we were pretty much best friends in year four like we loved each other and that so that slowly turned into me really crushing on her and I really liked her. I remember I would call her up on the house phone and speak to her for hours and hours and I remember one night her dad called me on the house phone and, and he said stop calling this number. And we told everyone in our class that we were cousins because we were so close. I don't know why we said that, but we lied to everyone. And then I went into high school. And high school was kind of like a weird sort of growing and learning sort of thing about yourself and about other people. And um, I remember girls were just starting to mature and um, guys hormones were out of the roof and I remember in class there was this really really hot girl and um, like I'm not sure if she noticed but I was always like staring at her and crushing on her anyway we ended up becoming really good friends and uh, we would speak on MSN back in the day so as soon as I got home I remember first thing I would do is jump on the computer and go on MSN and talk to her and I'd talk to her about everything you know um, like really personal stuff too, like family issues and stuff. And I remember Luke and Jay always would go on MSN and just read my conversations with her. And it made me feel really, really awkward and felt like I was doing something wrong. So that awkward thing that I got from my brothers sort of put me off her. But I remember I was crushing on her for a good six months, but nothing ever came out of it once again. At year 10, um, I still had never really had a girlfriend and this girl in a year younger than me, her name's um, Melissa, um, really really liked me but I didn't really feel the same way, like I thought she was cute and stuff and um, she jumped on MSN and she asked if she, if I'd like to be her boyfriend and um, I'm like, I've never had a girlfriend before so I'll try it out. The whole school knew like the next day that we were going out and like it was 
kind of weird because I didn't know if I wanted to be her boyfriend, but I already said yes. So, like, before that, me and her were really cool. We'd talk to each other, we'd have laughs and stuff. But that day when she asked me to be her boyfriend, I went to school and was trying to avoid her. Like, every time we saw each other, like, she'd run off and then I, I'd, like, look at a book as I'm walking past her or something. Anyway, by the end of the day, all of our friends, like, pushed us together and it was just a really, really awkward hug. It was like for two seconds and then after the hug, we just like went our separate ways. I went back on MSN that night and I'm like, I don't think this is working out. <laughs> just because I was like embarrassed of like everyone around me and like, I don't know, it, was, it felt kind of forced. So I didn't really want to be in that situation and I felt too awkward more than I did wanting to be her boyfriend. So my first girlfriend, her name was Courtney. And that was the first ever serious relationship I was in. So um, I met her when me, my uncle, my two little brothers went camping at a beach. There was like heaps of families and stuff. They were camping next to us and her little brother came over and played cricket with us. We'd play cricket for hours and hours and she would come and watch. And like we would, as she was watching and I was playing, like we would sort of like lock each other's eyes and like eye contact and stuff and then that night I remember there were fireworks and stuff and it was like <laughs> so romantic like you know when you're crushing on someone and you get so excited like that's how I was feeling at the time we ended up kissing and exchanging numbers I texted her and I found out that she ended up living two hours away but I really liked her so I didn't let that stop me so I took her out on a date to the movies in the city and we got to know each other a little bit more better and then finally she asked if I wanted to go over to her house and meet her family and stuff like we moved in really really quick so I would catch the train for two hours and then get off at her stop her mum and her dad would come pick me up and yeah this went on for about I'd say a good six months until until it just became too hard to go and see her because I had um, commitments with school, I had filming commitments and everything just got in the way and I was not able to travel for two hours like sometimes I'd go two times a week to go see her so that ended up coming to an end just because of distance which was really sad because she was my first girlfriend and we really did like each other we had a really good connection and we got along very well we'd make each other laugh all the time and we were both each other's first so, um, yeah, that you, you never forget your first. And yeah, that, that was a very, very special relationship. My second relationship um, was this girl, her name was Caitlin. And I'm pretty sure we saw each other for a year. She lived like three stops down from my suburb, like by train. And yeah, we just we just got along very well. She wanted to be in the entertainment industry and so did I. And I think this kind of like brought us together. To be honest, I forgot how I even met her. But I remember our first date, I was texting her. Our first date, we went to the city with my friend and her friend and we went and got hot chocolates. From there, we just uh, continued. I'd go over to her house pretty much. She'd either be at my house or I'd be at her house at least four times a week. Like we were like glued together. We had to see each other. But um, unfortunately, like when you see someone that much, uh, personalities kind of clash. And I remember we had a lot of fights um, leading up to the end of our relationship, uh, which sucked because like when it was good, it was really good, but when it was bad, it kind of sucked. And then the bad kind of outweighed the good and our personalities just clashed too much. After that, I ended up uh, moving to America for my career. So we stopped speaking. I haven't spoken to her in maybe six years, but it was a, it was a really good experience. I feel like each relationship or crush or anything you go through ends up leading to finding the correct person you're meant to be with. So then I moved to America and I was touring so I had a lot of crushes and flings while I was on tour and while I was in America. Um, nothing too serious. We'd see each other but it was never like, it never got to the I love you stage until I met a girl named Christina. Christina 
was like the biggest crush of my life like I was so attracted to her she was just like like in my eyes she was perfect like the most perfect girl that I had ever laid eyes on this girl I don't know it moved it moved very very slow I feel like that that was half my fault half her fault but yeah it did it did move very very slow and we weren't able to meet eye to eye I remember the last night that I saw her it was actually the best night that I'd ever had with her um, mainly because we did meet eye to eye but sadly that last night was the night right before I went on tour for two months and uh, when I went on tour while I was dating her we kind of lost contact a lot um, just because like when you're away from somewhere you, you tend to focus on what's going on where you are and not so much where everyone else is which is why I lost a lot of relationships not only with girlfriends but with like friends and even some family in Australia because like being in another country is like being on another planet you know you, you, you don't know what's going on in other people's lives so yeah I ended up going on to her and me and her lost connection before the last night that I saw her we knew we were on like rocky terms and I had met a girl named Chelsea um, two weeks before I had left on tour and Chelsea was just the exact opposite of Christina personality wise and she was just like the most generous like laughing um, funny like kindest person that I had ever met and not only that but she was absolutely gorgeous beautiful stunning girl and I'm like, this is what I want, you know. I don't want to be in a relationship where I'm, we're not too sure what we want. With Chelsea, I just knew straight away that she was just like, just like the the one for me. I, I guess like she's she's the one for everyone, I guess, because she ha she has one of the most sweetest, generous personalities ever. And I wanted to pursue that. So while I was on tour. Um, I kind of left the relationship with Miss, me and Christina behind and I was focusing on me and Chelsea. After tour ended, I ended up going back to Australia and me and Chelsea, like the chemistry just even between texting and talking on the phone, like we talk on the phone for hours, um, was just so strong that I knew I had to fly her out to Australia because I wanted to see her. And so I flew Chelsea out to Australia and she came and stayed with me and my family for two weeks. Like, we hardly even knew each other, but like, when she came down, I felt like that I knew her for years, and my whole family loved her. She'd help my family, like, with the cooking, with the cleaning, just a really, like, sweet and kind person. Mum always used to say this, she would make the whole house laugh with her laugh. Like, she'd, she'd brighten the room up. When I moved back to LA, she was moving out of her apartment and she had nowhere to go and I said oh you can stay with me for a couple of weeks until you find out what you wanted to do um, and where you want to live and then two weeks ended up turning into a month and then a month ended up turning into three months and three months ended up turning into two years so we lived together for two years and saw each other every single day and the good way outweighed the bad like the good was really really good I, I, I think we only fought maybe once every month which is like nothing especially when you're living with someone like we just clicked really well and she'd help me with everything she'd help me on my career she'd she'd let me focus on my career she would help give me ideas she would like help me clean she would help me cook like it was just like a two-way street and we helped each other i like, grow as people it almost felt like it was too good to be true and then of course i left for tour again and on tour, I made some bad mistakes that that I really do regret. I, I wish I didn't make the mistakes, but it has helped me identify the person that I am. And I had to tell her, so I told her about the mistakes. And the, the mistakes did really mess up the relationship. And um, it, I felt like it was coming to an end. And... Um, that mistake ended up really cementing the the end to that so um i ended up moving back to australia about me and chelsea we we still talk to each other and like we're we're still friends 
and we can still, you know, have a laugh. Like, she'll call me when she's upset and, um, like, then we'll just end up at the end of the phone call laughing about it, which is really cool. Like, I couldn't ask for anything more of her. She, she was very forgiving and understanding, which she should not have been. Like, she could have been just... She could have just completely ignored me and said, you're on your own, like, goodbye. But she really did help me get over that relationship. So, um, yeah, since that relationship, I haven't really... I, I just feel like I can't connect to anyone else, not because of them, but because of myself. And, I mean, eventually I will. Eventually I'll find someone, but... Yeah, it's just, um, it, it's kind of hard to get over, but at the end of the day, I'm, I'm really happy that she's moved on with her life, and, um, you know, and being that great, smiley person that she was with me, um, I couldn't ask for anything more, but yeah, all of those relationships have made me the person I am today, and yeah, if, if, my future wife is watching this right now just know I'm trying to become a better person and yeah I can only take it one step at a day so um, yeah pretty pretty hard to get out but I feel like that's a part of my life that no one's no one really knows about and so I, I wanted to get that out there and um, just to tell you that it's okay to have different relationships and go through different things and uh, to move on from those relationships and take out the best things about those relationships and to move forward um, and even if you're not you haven't been in a relationship ever before that's completely fine because the most important relationship is a relationship with yourself and you cannot be with anyone until you truly understand yourself and and love yourself first so that's where I'm at right now I'm on the process of still finding out about myself trying to better myself every single day and doing things that will make me love myself so guys I hope you enjoyed this vlog today um, it's kind of a different vlog kind of wanted to talk about something that you guys don't really know something that's really close to me that I've been holding in from an audience for so long and yeah um, hope you enjoy and stay true to yourself alright guys love you thank you for watching oh this new crazy mother